Hi, my name is Florian from Quality Guru, where I answer your questions and share knowledge about quality management. Today I would like to talk about the process FMEA. A failure mode and effect analysis is a very common risk assessment tool in many industries. And there are different kinds of FMEAs. There's the design FMEA where you analyze the functionality of a product and there's the process FMEA where you analyze the risk in a process. It could be a business process, it could be a service process, it could be a production process, it could be any process you want to analyze. And the idea behind is that you analyze your process by giving it a risk number so that you can see where in the process is the highest risk. So you try to calculate the risk with a number. We call it risk priority number. And it's basically based on severity. That means how severe the problem is, what you are facing. The occurrence, how likely is it that it's going to happen. And detection, which means how likely am I going to detect this failure before I send it out and affect maybe my customer or my own employees. And this risk priority number, when you multiply severity, occurrence and detection, gives you then an idea when it's very high that there's a very high risk or that it's very low and there's a lower risk. So you can compare then later all the risk within your process and you can see which areas of the process are more likely to have a risk or a problem. So let us go into an example. And here, for example, I share on this table the example driving to work. So the first thing what you do when you want to analyze your process is you map out your process. You say one, two, three, four, five, this is my process. And in this case, uh, I only say step number one is how I drive to work. If it is a production process or let's say Baking a pizza, you could say, I prepare the dough, I put the toppings, I put it in the oven, I'm selling it, that would, this would be your process. But in my example, I make it more simple so that it's easier to understand. And I just say, driving to work. So driving to work, this would be my first process step. And then I would ask myself, what is the requirement for myself for this process when I'm driving to work? So what would be the requirement? And there's one requirement I would say, I would not like to drive too fast and I would not like to drive too slow because some things could happen if I drive too fast and other things would happen if I drive too slow. In both cases, it's not optimal for me to do this. So I would say these are my requirements. Then I could ask, what are the potential failure modes? And let's go only for the first line here. If I say I should not drive too fast, so what could I do wrong? I could actually drive too fast and then I would be yeah, too fast. And what could be then the potential effect? The effect could be that I will have an accident if I drive too fast. There could be many other effects and in uh, reality you would do in your FMEA all the different possibilities in order to analyze all of those, but I will only give you one example and I could say I can give you an accident. There could be other reasons. I could get a ticket. I could hurt somebody. Many, many, many things. But here it's only I could have an accident. So if I would have an accident, is this, what is the severity of this issue? Is it a rather high severity? So is it very dangerous for somebody? Would, it, would there be a severe consequence or is it rather low? And I would say it's rather high because when we talk about FMEA language, a 10 here in this case means that there's danger for life and health. So I would put it a 10 instead of a 1. A 1 would be that would be an insignificant effect which nobody actually cares about. So in this case, it's a 10. If you're not sure what the numbers means, type into Google type into it FMEA severity occurrence and detection table and you will find all kinds of tables for different industries and you can pick the one which applies to your specific industry and you kind of compare them and use the one which suits you best. 
So for this case, I would say its severity is a 10. And then I could ask, okay, now that I have an accident and the severity is very high, so what could be the potential causes? Because I want to identify the causes and later to fix them, to reduce my risk. So what could be a potential cause for me driving too fast, getting into an accident? It could be that I'm getting up late. I'm getting up too late, meaning that I feel like I have to compensate the time I was lying in bed in order to catch up now with this lost time. And the question is, is this happening very often? So occurrence would be a 10 if it happens all the time and it would be a 1 if it almost never happens. And I can say, normally I get out of bed in time, but sometimes maybe I'm a little bit lazier, so I could give it a 3. So my occurrence is a 3, it's not happening all the time, but sometimes it could happen. And then I have the risk to drive too fast and get into an accident. Then how could I control this of getting too early, uh, too late out of bed? What could be my current control? And here I could say, okay, in order to avoid this, that I feel that I'm getting out too late and then feel the drive to, the urge to drive too fast, I could put an alarm 10 minutes earlier, 15 minutes earlier, half an hour earlier, no matter what it would be in your case or in my case. But let's say for this example, 10 minutes earlier in order to avoid any pressure on driving too fast. So this could be my control. And with this alarm, I would be able to detect it when I'm late because the alarm will show me, oh, now you have to really get up and I would get out of bed. So my detection is, let's say, if I'm not able to detect it in this case, it would be a 10. So I'm not able to detect it everything what I do wrong, I automatically affect my customer or my own uh, company. But in one, it means uh, I can always detect it. And with a two, I might be able to almost always detect it and then avoid this issue from happening. So now I have these numbers, means severity 10, occurrence three, and detection two. I multiply them with each other. 10 times three is 30, times two is 60. And this gives me my risk priority number. And this is a number between, normally what is the highest number? And the highest number would be 1000. So if everything would be a 10 times 10 times 10, it would be a thousand. And if everything would be on the lowest level, that means one times one times one, it would be a one. So the risk priority number is between one and 1000. So you can then compare the numbers against each other and find out which of the risk is the highest in your process. So I have a second line here. We can quickly go through it just to have a better understanding. Not driving too slow is the requirement. What could I do wrong? I could actually drive too slow. What would be the effect? I would be late. How severe would it if I would be late? I put it seven because it's not a matter of life and death, but my boss could be unhappy. My customers could be unhappy or the one I work with could be unhappy because now they have to wait for me. So I would put it a seven because there could be some dissatisfaction. It could affect uh, the work I'm doing uh, in, a, in a certain way. What could be the potential causes of me driving too slow could be because of bad weather. How often do we have bad weather? Occurrence five means in my area we have often bad weather. Not always, but often. And what is my current control? I could leave earlier than if I would normally leave at 7, I could leave at 6.45. So it's basically similar like the alarm thing, the uh, thing uh, in, the, in the situation before. And it would help me probably in 3 over 10, let's say in most of the cases to avoid the effect of bad weather if it's not too serious. In total, it would give me an RPN of 105. It's a little bit higher than the first one. so. If I now only have these two lines, where do I want to work first on? Probably on the 105 because it's more risk in this process. So what could I do to reduce it? I could think about how I can improve my detection or reduce my occurrence if it's possible. And then we would sit together in a team, in a company and analyze the process and identify together what can we do in order to reduce the occurrence and increase or improve 
the detection. And this is how you work with FMEA. Let me know. Uh, we have also here this table where you then can, by the RPN, map your process into the different risk areas and you can see, okay, if my process falls here into, for example, the green or in the yellowish area, it's maybe a lower risk and if it goes into the red or orange area, into the high risk area. And by this we can also identify where are the processes or the aspects of my process which have a high risk. How are you working with FMEA? Was this clear for you? Do you have any questions? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to read about it and I see you in the next video.